Hey, what's going on with y'all? Fellas, ladies, what's good? What's good with y'all, man? It's definitely good to be back, as always. How can it not be? Everything's a motherfucking blessing, baby. It's all good, baby. Concrete gorillas in the concrete jungle. This one. My bad, silverback gorillas in the concrete jungle, baby. You know what I'm saying? That's what G even used to say uh, back when uh, 50 Cent was doing this thing back in the, you know what I'm saying, 2008-ish. like 2000-ish. Like, no, my bad, 2004-ish. 8-ish. 2004-ish. I was still listening to G Unit back 2008-ish, 9-ish, 10-ish, to infinity-ish. But like G Unit, motherfucker. 50 Cent's rhymes would like relate to my life deeply and Tupac. Two, uh, three rappers, uh, Eminem. Eminem, let me tell you about Eminem. Eminem is the only rapper, this is, this is a fun fact about me. Fun fact is that there's only two rappers out there that can make me uh, feel sad or feel any kind of emotion or cry. Eminem and Tupac. For some reason, they have a way to make me cry. Like, Eminem says shit that I can like, he says it in a way that makes me sad. If you listen to a song by him, it's called uh, Difficult. It's called Difficult. It's when Proof died, which is his homeboy, since, since childhood birth. I understand what that's like. My homeboy got murdered. You know what that's like. Not to mention like all the other friends I lost too, by other other ways of being dead or in prison. I got <laughs> I got one friend right now in prison for thirty fucking years. He's my best friend. He's doing thirty years right now. So I know what it's like to lose people from whatever situation it is. 30 years. He didn't have his mouth busted. It's fucked up about him is that he's been doing, he's basically been in prison all of his life, obviously now, but I'm telling you, when he was uh, 18, he just was in and out of jail, like six months here, six months there. Hey, what the fuck you been at, nigga? Oh, shit, that's six months. And there's a lot of people in this world that do that. I've hung out with a lot of people who can do six months like it ain't nothing. Stand on their head doing six months. Oh, shit, I'll be gone for vacation. Like it's a vacation. This is a strong mental mind to do that, though. But obviously, though, after the, uh, the jail sentence, can you really cope with what's actually going on in life? The PTSD of things you might have saw that you think you didn't see. If you saw somebody getting stabbed up, it's going to affect you. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you see it, it's going to affect you. If you see anything that you're not used to seeing, especially when it involves violence, you're going to feel it. It's going to affect you. I don't give a fuck who you are. It's going to stay in your brain. Don't ever forget that. You'll never forget what you saw. As a kid, and that can contribute to other behaviors such as sociopathy, narcissism, and uh, uh, psychopathy. And uh, yeah. We have a lot of choices in life, but there's sometimes in life where we can't make the choices that we wish we could make because our brain has lacked empathy or sympathy or whatever the fuck ever. I seen a situation where there was a woman outside. It was a girl, not a woman. It was a girl. She needs to be more developed to be a woman yet. If I had to guess her age, I would say she was like 16. This was in Arizona. I was gonna go meet a. Uh, I was doing some shit with this female I knew. I was making. A, I was making some good money on the side. I, I was selling dope. No, no, I'm sorry. At the time, I wasn't selling. I was selling pills, basically dope because dope is anything that's drugs, right? Pretty much, which is alcohol, cigarettes, weed, methamphetamine, cocaine, acid, dope. Maybe you think of dope in other firm, you like dope is heroin, meth, crack, cocaine. That's dope. We gets thrown in there too, but at the end of the day, when we're talking about hard drugs, we think of dope, right? 
So when I say dope, I understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about drugs in general, things that can change your mind, alter it in some kind of way. They can do that. I saw this lady, she was sitting outside and um, this guy's grabbing her arm. Like, come here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. And I saw it and I was like, all my life, I've never intervened or tried to interfere in somebody's personal problems because I didn't want something to happen. I made myself feel stupid at the end of it because I made a bad mistake. I was fearful of that before I ever tried to be a hero ever in my life. I've seen a lot of assaults happen in front of my face where I didn't actually uh, admit to what happened or try to protect it. When I was in Korea, um, I'm not going to talk about the culture in a bad way, but I know that at least what I saw, it almost seems normal to slap your woman up. Slap her face. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Don't talk to me like that. It's normal a little bit. I seen a lot of assaults in the middle of the street. Ain't nobody do shit. Watching it. Open arms. What? Oh. I said that many, many. You'll say, oh. You will say, oh. Oh. And you're watching that shit and you're like, what the fuck? And I seen like a woman get beat the fuck up in the street when I was 16. He was getting beat in the street like the bitch stole something from a store. Bitch, what the fuck is that motherfucker? What the, what the juju beans that bitch? And then being the fuck out of her, right? She's like, no, please don't hurt me. Huh? And that was the first time I seen that. And I didn't interfere. I never interfered. I never tried to join into some shit that I had no idea what the fuck was going on exactly. I don't know what she did. Is it my business to join in? Do I have to join in as a as a um a good Samaritan? Do I have to make myself be in a situation where I'm a open target, open targeted Samaritan? Get shot and killed, joining the wrong argument that I shouldn't be involved in. I keep those things in, in, into consideration. So with that being said. It made me fear away from things. When I was uh, 13, the first racist experience, uh, experience I ever had, where I felt like it was hard for me to trust somebody to say hello when they walked by me, was when I was 13. I was coming out of the 7-Eleven. I'll never forget this shit. It was bright as day. I was coming out of the 7-Eleven with a skateboard in my hand because I can do anything that anybody else in this world can do. I can skateboard. I can do all the things that whatever you think is white or Puerto Rican or Spanish or or the Negroes or whatever the fuck it is, I can do what they can do. And they said, hey, hey, cutie. Hey, how you doing? Oh, you doing, guy? You're so cute. Oh, my God. Hey, totally. You're so cute. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Fucking ugly ass monkey. Fuck you. Ugly ass motherfucker. Look at him. Thought we actually liked him. <laughs> I look at people that walk past me like that all the time. Like I get a little bit thinking about that. Are they going to troll me? If y'all don't know who was born in like 99, 98, 97, 96 even. The 90s is the year of the troll. The reason why y'all are trolling and doing the things you're doing right now is because of the 90s. Don't you ever forget that. The Jerky Boys and all the and the Howard Stern Show and all the other things that were going on because you learned the troll from the fucking 90s. The, the 90s is the year of the fucking troll. Don't you ever forget that. I'm on your side. Back when I was uh, eight years old, nine years old, I was doing fucking prank calls. <laughs> Well, it's funny because in my neighborhood, they, I lived in a neighborhood called Hanum, Hanum Village. This is like the, this is the fucking get. So they had a brochure right there, right? Everyone's number is on there. And you don't need to call the whole number. You just need the back of the number. 8474. 
That's your last digit of your number. That's all they needed. So with that being said, if they needed the last digits, is that they left everyone's number on there. As long as you knew where they lived, you had a number. You didn't have to know where they lived to call them and prank call them. As long as you knew where they fucking lived, you had a number. <laughs> this is dude. Homeboy we used to chill with, Chris, and his dad. Prank call them. Let's play a hate motherfucker, man. He never gives us no goddamn eggs when we come over for breakfast or whatever. His dad's a bitch. We play, we prank call his house. We do this, this, shit, blah, blah. And um, someone ratted me out because I pranked them really bad. I, I literally took like a, I don't want to tell that. I prank called him really bad. I played a prank on him, on his dad. Because his dad was a play in there, his bitch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> someone said I did it. He got his older brother on me, Roger. I'll never forget his name. Chris, his older brother was Roger. I was, uh... I think nine and a half years old or 10. He said, you've been fucking on my house. You've been prank on my shit. I heard that shit. I was like, nah, it wasn't me. Uh, it was you. Everyone's telling me you did it. It's you. It's not me, man. It's not me. And fuck you. Kicks me right in my balls. He kicks me so hard in my dick and my balls. I have a scar on my dick from t- till that happened to this day. Kick my ball. It's not a scar if you see my dick. I was on a trail. You can't see it. I have to point it out to you. There's never been a girl who I dated who was like, oh my God, look at that scar. It's so disgusting. I can't suck your already ugly cock because cocks are ugly and balls. They're like old, decrepit men. <laughs> so they never said that. Any woman I went with. Because first of all, a woman wouldn't care if your dick was ugly, honestly, because they don't care. Women are beautiful. They don't give a fuck about that shit. They love. They love. But if I t- I had to tell her my last ex, I was like, you know, that, like a, the scar right there, you never seen it? I had to pull it back and show her. It's a scar on my shit. It's a big scar like this. You can't see it unless I show you, though. You cannot see it unless I show you. If it's hard, you can't see it at all. If it's, if it's soft, you can see it. That's a scar. It's skin missing from me getting kicked in my dick when I was fucking nine years old from a prank call. <laughs> I thought to get revenge. I called my brother, and my brother, you know, he scared him or whatever, and he never fucked with me again. He didn't whoop his ass, but he scared him. The guy that kicked me in my dick was in ninth grade. I was in, um, no, no, he was in, he was in, I'm sorry, he was in sixth grade. I was in third grade. No, fourth grade. I was in fourth grade. He was in sixth grade. Two years, two grades older than me. Keep me in my dick. What can I possibly do to this guy, you know? At the time. (laughs) You just never know what's out there. And if you see someone going through something where you're like, damn, I got to protect this person. I saw someone in Arizona begging. Don't touch me, sir. Get off of me. Don't touch me. You're not my dad. I saw everything before I was like, I was like, I got to jump in and help this person out. You're not my dad. You're not my dad. Please, you're not my dad. I got to help out now, right? So I helped out in a back alley in Arizona. In a back alley in Arizona. A back alley. It was off a Swan and 22nd Street, maybe. I ain't been in Arizona in a long time, but I'll never forget that where it was. If I if it ever went down there tomorrow, I would take you exactly where it happened by the QT, across the street. I'll never forget that. Fuck you touching this girl for where's her dad at? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I never touched her. She she lives here, daycare center. It ain't look like one. It like a front for a daycare center. There was no nothing in there at all. It was one pool table and a fucking foosball table, like one foosball table back there. I'm telling you, before I called the cops, I investigated first. I'm telling you. I, to my heart, I think I was right. I don't think I ever did anything wrong. I think I could have potentially saved something that was bad happening. It makes me like sad to think about that because I really feel I saw that. I wasn't wrong. Just because the cops said, 
So anyway, so I saw that and I, well, she's been here for a while. Um, this is this is the daycare center. This is the daycare center. This don't look fishy to you at all. No. All right. Well, I feel like an asshole. I called nine one one. I called him. I said this is a person because I I was that strongly feeling about it. So I was feeling that strongly about like I had to find the person who did what they did to. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it is happening, I need to be there to stand and take precaution because I didn't take precaution when I was 14, 13, all the other things I decided to you that I saw and seen that I just ignored. That's why I had this long side story in between it because I didn't know if I should stop that or be embarrassed. And, and cops told me that everything's okay. I still didn't believe it. I really felt like I caught something. Like, oh, the way that guy I was acting, looking back at it now, he was acting like a complete sociopath. And I bet you that girl, hopefully she's still, everything's okay, but I don't think that shit ended right. I think I did the right thing, and I think that I let evil get away. I think the cops let evil get away. Not me, but I think the cops did. And I think they owe me an apology for that shit. If they ever do find that, aka Zodiac Killer, Zodiac Babysitter Killer, you fucking pieces of maggot motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, anyway, y'all, take it easy out there. Y'all be safe. I wanted to share this story with y'all. My camera did cut off in between this shit, whatever. It's all good. I'm going to add these things together and put it online, and y'all, you know, hit me up. Holla at your boy, you know. 2012 is coming out real soon. I want to do um some streams next week. Also, I've been hearing some feedback from other people as well, subscribers and uh, all the other things as well. And I really appreciate y'all. I really do. So y'all take it easy out there. Y'all be safe. And uh, make sure to catch me on the next one. I'm going to keep doing videos, a couple more to the end of this year. And we're going to start the new year off proper. Peace out, y'all.